hello everyone. I'm so pleased to be here in person, finally, in a Phos4G uh, academic track. Again, my name is Federica Gaspari. I'm a second year PhD student at the Technical University of Milano. And today I will talk to you briefly about a work in progress, as uh, any open source project actually. Uh, an open uh, work in progress related to a summer school that is organized yearly by my uh, group, that is uh, the Laboratory of Geodetic and Photogrammetric Measurement at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, actually, it is devoted to uh, uh, surveying and monitoring a glacier condition in North Italy. So uh, the idea is to show you how we try to deal with uh, openness of education and openness of software and material also. Uh, and uh, we connected this aspect with the goal also of climate change awareness and inclusion of a student in this topic. Uh, so the main question that uh, raised to our mind was actually how we can make uh, this summer school that firstly was uh, entirely devoted to polytechnic students more accessible, more open and inclusive also under all the aspect that these terms uh, means usually. Uh, so in the next slide I will show you, I will talk you a bit about the context uh, of uh, the project, uh, uh, mainly the study area uh, we are focusing in the bigger research project of uh, our group, uh, and then also the summer school with its history. Then I will show you a bit about the goal and the workflow uh, for the summer school with uh, an highlight of the results uh, with some discussion on the outcomes uh, of uh, the latest year work on the summer school, especially when we started opening it uh, as much as possible. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then I will go uh, directly to conclusion and future works. Uh, well, the study area, as I was anticipating before, uh, is uh, actually oops, sorry, uh, the Belvedere Glacier, that is a debris-covered glacier in North Italy, in the Italian Alps, uh, that is uh, actually on the east face of uh, Monte Rosa. I don't know if any of you know this area or ever went there trekking. It's really a nice place, even if it's really changing a lot, unfortunately, lately. Uh, and here are some numbers. Uh, his surface is around uh, two kilometers square. Uh, his length is around 3,000 uh, meters from uh, uh, north to south. And also his maximum width is roughly three, uh, 500 meters. Uh, it is actually a, a glacier that has been uh, vastly and widely studied by not only geomatics uh, like us, but also some uh, geomorphologists and glaciologists in, uh, in Italy. Italy, but the fact is that this happens uh, mostly uh, independently. So it, it is something that in the past uh, had a lot of issues in communicating the result, having some bridge. Uh, and this is the first, uh, let's say, issue we found when we started studying uh, the glacier. Uh, the glacier is the uh, main protagonist, the main character uh, of the research project, uh, of one of the research projects uh, of my group uh, since 2015. Uh, when some professors, particularly passionate about hiking, but also mountain and uh, uh, glacier monitoring and also climate change uh, studies and awareness, started studying the glacier uh, and also testing uh, a geomatics approach, uh, mainly uh, GNSS measurement for point measurement over time, uh, and also UAV photogrammetry in order to test the capabilities of this uh, device uh, for monitoring. And every year, with a dedicated survey, started producing using accurate and complete 3D models uh, and also uh, orthophotos, referenced uh, high quality orthophotos of the glacier. In order to understand its evolution in time, uh, how uh, points measured were displaced around, along uh, the glacier in the different part of the glacier and also the, velo the velocities of changes. Here you can see, for example, I think it's quite impressive, uh, the evolution in November 22 and also during 2023 of uh, the main lobe of uh, the glacier uh, that uh, is also monitored with a fixed camera uh, equipment we have for uh, detecting with uh, stereo cameras, for detecting also uh, daily uh, the changes on the lobe and also basically uh, try to develop also tools that are accessible not only for our project on the glacier, but also other glacier, other places that uh, underwent uh, severe uh, transformation and changes uh, due to climate change. And so actually, uh, 
the research project, the passion of uh, professor, researchers in our groups, uh, led to the creation of uh, the summer school in 2016. It started as an innovative teaching program at Politecnico di Milano, supported by the Passion in Action uh, uh, initiative there. Uh, but it was mainly devoted to geomatic students, uh, so uh, only students uh, with uh, already a background of uh, uh, traditional topogra uh, topographic measurement uh, and uh, some kind of also photogrammetry and GNSS measurement. Uh, in time, uh, this situation changed. We decided, uh, actually professor decided and also uh, researcher decided to open the, the course to more students from other disciplines of our universities, uh, not only engineers, uh, like environmental engineers like me, but also civil engineers, all the engineers of Politecnico, as well as architecture, landscape uh, uh, architecture students, urban planners, and uh, designers that are the main disciplines at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, the idea was all to uh, introduce students to the basic of a survey because sometimes uh, these data are widely used to uh, understand and study the environment, uh, create also pro a cartographic product, but sometimes uh, the idea behind how these data are collected, how these data are processed and uh, uh, evaluated also in terms of uh, data quality is missing uh, when these data are used in particular projects. The idea in the next year is also to open the, the, the course outside Politecnico. There are some bureaucracy issues at the moment, but the idea is to go on that direction. So at the moment, with our experience, we are a small group at the moment, four or five uh, person in the research lab working also in this project. How we can uh, make more accessible, open, and inclusive uh, these uh, uh, experiences. So we started uh, trying to highlight what were the main points uh, uh, that uh, were the core of the summer school, starting from uh, the software used, uh, how to structure the lectures, uh, and also how to engage with students and also the local community there. Because, OK, we are surveying, uh, we are uh, collecting data that can be used by, widely by the research community, but how we can integrate the education aspect with the research aspect as well as the community engagement aspect. So starting from this, uh, in the last year we identified uh, some uh, uh, aspect to be improved and again there's still a lot of work to do but these are the most recent uh, work we've done. Uh, first we identify a modular workflow for uh, uh, the summer school uh, that mainly consists on theory session with uh, some basic introduction to the theory of the disciplines involved, practical sessions so hands on learning for practice and learning by doing, also some uh, data processing of course in order to obtain the data and made by the students themselves with peer-related uh, tutoring and uh, guided uh, session that are part of the main research project uh, initiative and also final presentation that are engaged uh, also in uh, uh, some kind of a critical thinking of, about the experience and uh, shared experience uh, feedbacks uh, especially by students in order to improve constantly uh, we, in the new version of the summer school uh, suggestion and also criticism maybe. So firstly, the theory session, this was something already consolidated also in the past, uh, were dedicated to, as I, I was mentioning, geomatics, uh, oops, uh, data processing and visualization. Mostly there is first a, uh, a main idea on the background of the glacier because it, it is really a challenging environment. Uh, it changes every year. Also, it's not that accessible in terms of mobility. Sometimes the tracks are missing because part of the moraine are collapsing. So it's also a dangerous area. So the first part is also an introduction on how to go there, be prepared for the field work, actually. Then there is a photogrammetry module that dedicated to introduction to the core idea of photogrammetry, how it works, how you can 3D reconstruct uh, an object. Uh, then GNSS positioning with the basic uh, of uh, uh, point measurement on the glacier. And then GIS with an introduction to QGIS in particular, uh, as well as uh, to the main concept of GIS. And then some focus also on our pro uh, process of uh, the fixed camera uh, device we have on the front, the picture you saw before in the video. We've uh, also an idea on how to process the data that are released uh, openly, later we will see. Uh, and how to process this stereo camera data and with uh, some Python uh, toolkit, openly accessible. And in conclusion, uh, how to uh, build also in order to communicate and also to improve the outreach of the project, how to build 3D, simple 3D web uh, visualization with a common open source uh, library. 
uh, then, of course, these imply having a lot of teaching uh, resources uh, that have to be updated every year with new version and also be, uh, have to be aligned also with uh, the latest trend also in FOSS and FOSS4G. Uh, so uh, we move to publish publishing uh, on our MK Docs website hosted on GitHub pages, uh, all the teaching material, so you can find everything uh, online. And uh, all the entire modular structure uh, is intended to be constantly updating, uh, integrated also with uh, more advanced topic, uh, considering the interest uh, of students uh, that uh, usually got involved also on master thesis project and got even more engaged on the topic. And so uh, anyone can access and of course open issues if you have any suggestion and uh, suggest uh, improvement uh, for the work. Then there are the practical sessions, uh, as I was mentioning, that are some kind of parallel works that are conducted during the days on the glacier, because uh, during the week uh, we stay there uh, during the summer school, students, uh, tutors, uh, and the professor, that is actually the most enthusiast one to go around hiking. Uh, we stay in a alpine hut, a traditional alpine hut, and so we stay all together uh, in the evening to share some time and having the theoretical lessons, but then during the days we divide in little groups uh, and we go around in order to uh, collect the data and understand how the environment is done, what are the peculiarities of this challenging environment. And in this way also uh, students uh, have some inputs uh, divided in different groups with different background inside the, the different group, uh, have uh, also some kind of inputs on what can be done, how the project can be also enriched with different perspective, not only on the technical uh, point of view of uh, the processing or the collection of the data. And the, there's the data processing, uh, during which uh, there are practice sessions, again, uh, in the Alpine Hub. Here's the main challenge is the limited accessibility to internet connection, so we have to move from one Alpine Hub to another one, uh, uh, in which uh, students learn how to process GNSS measurement, uh, the image taken with drones, and also how to uh, construct the product that are actually the one on which uh, geomatics uh, researcher, but also glaciologists, geomorphologists uh, have the opportunity to uh, have studies uh, and conduct uh, analysis. Uh, mostly we use RTK Lib and QGIS and Cloud Compare for the processing, uh, as well uh, the, the tutorial um, material is, uh, is online, it's still on the under update because uh, in the next weeks uh, there will be the new version. Uh, we are also working toward moving us from uh, commercial software to uh, open source software for photogrammetry. This was the main issue for uh, our group because there's a long tradition, uh, unfortunately, in our university of using uh, Metashape, but we are uh, actually moving toward uh, ODM, Open Drone Map and Meshroom, uh, in order to have a full uh, open source, uh, open source uh, approach uh, to the teaching and also to the data processing. And then, of course, the final presentation uh, that uh, enhances uh, the experience uh, of the students uh, under both the technical and the human side, because they can share what they learned, uh, what are the most critical aspects they faced, uh, and also uh, they can also suggest what, what are actually the, the improved, the improved uh, needs that uh, need to be considered in the next version. And so also uh, they uh, realize how they contributed to an ongoing research project, a real research project, uh, by advancing the project documentation of uh, the product that are created, uh, the uh, also monographies of ground control points that are measured, and also by improving the software tutorials, maybe suggesting some particular steps that were not included, but they found particularly difficult to follow. And so with their uh, critical feedback and comments, uh, we are able to understand also how uh, everything is perceived uh, on the other side and works toward uh, some uh, um, new updates uh, for the project. Uh, while uh, we work with uh, the students every year, every edition, uh, there is someone there within the students that came up with uh, some new ideas on new tools, uh, new approach on how to make uh, everything open. And, or more open. And so uh, one of the latest uh, efforts we've done, also in collaboration with a student that then started doing a uh, master thesis on the glacier uh, 
uh, on the Glacier Monitoring Project was uh, to uh, start releasing the data, all the data, uh, uh, standardized and, and um, in, in particular point clouds and 3D data uh, as open data on Zenodo uh, so that uh, the idea that these data are not only geomatics driven but are, are accessible to the entire community and particular to the entire community outside also the research one. I know these are technical data, sometimes point clouds are not that easy to be understand outside uh, the world of uh, geomati the geomaticians, but these are really a core element for studies and so on. And it, it was nice to see that when we started uh, sharing this data on Zenodo, promoting them also with some uh, outreach event uh, together with students, master students involved in the summer school, uh, we got in contact uh, with uh, other uh, people mostly from Italy and some also from Germany that are interested in sharing the data uh, in, uh, in, the same, in the same ways, uh, also learning from uh, our mistake maybe in the past and also in order to improve. So we share point clouds, uh, DSMs, uh, uh, digital surface models and orthophotos on Zenodo uh, together with metadata so that everyone can understand how the data were produced, how the data were processed and when basically were, they were collected. All these data are prepared by students uh, during the summer schools. Uh, they are aware that they will be open data, so they are also make more responsible about the fact that what they are doing is actually impacting the research community on glacier monitoring. And all of these data are released in a format uh, accessible with uh, QGIS, Cloud Compare. Uh, regarding the GCP measurements, uh, we also released uh, uh, by using, uh, 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 by developing, uh, uh, designing actually, a database uh, with PostgreSQL and PostGIS for releasing both uh, year measurement of the points uh, uh, with their computed distances over time. Distances, uh, uh, actually also uh, displacements, uh, velocities and accelerations, so uh, everyone can access also this data through QGIS, uh, QGIS and any other software also specially enabled. Here, there you can find also the QR code uh, to the data. And again, of course, uh, uh, having this kind of uh, structure with the data they collected, students can also have an idea of what is happening to the glacier, have an idea of uh, the glacier evolution, uh, how it is changing, so they also connecting uh, the concept of having this data uh, on a local area, but uh, how these uh, uh, data are important to understand the impact uh, on the valley, on the um, local community there, what could be happening in the next year in the surrounding environment by understanding part of the glacier that are moving faster than others, uh, and through this reconstruction and having also uh, available the data from previous surveys and previous uh, uh, campaign, they can understand the year in which uh, during which something happened, so they also, we are trying also to foster the critical thinking while observing the different velocities, uh, displacement and acceleration over time uh, along the glacier. So they gain familiarity with the software and also uh, understand a bit uh, of the impact of this data. So you can see uh, that is quite impressive what is happening also uh, to the annual volume loss of the glacier that is also a disappearing glacier, unfortunately, due to the latest observation we have uh, that are compared also with uh, other uh, researchers in uh, geomorphology and glaciologists. Also, during the summer school, uh, some uh, processing toolkits and uh, dedicated toolkits for change detection, uh, image analysis uh, were developed, uh, mostly based on the fixed camera devices we have on the terminal lab, but also on the orthophotos we have. So, for example, in the past year, we released uh, all of them are available on GitHub. iSpy 4D uh, for uh, the continuous monitoring in time of uh, glaciers uh, using low-cost stereo cameras. Uh, and also deep, deep image matching that is uh, mostly dedicated to, actually it was born uh, for the glacier Belvedere, but it's also used uh, on other glacier now as uh, another, uh, other case studies are actually joined uh, the testing of, uh, of this toolkit. So if you are working on this, uh, uh, in, uh, in this field, I invite you to check and have a look. And in conclusion, 
the idea is that uh, what, uh, what is done there has to be also communicated in an effective way. So uh, thanks also through the Web 3D uh, module, students have an idea on how to manu manipulate the data in order to make them vi visible in an effective way. So uh, effective visualization of the, da of the data in the web uh, so that, uh, for example, with a Web uh, 2D map, they can, someone, everyone can access uh, a website and see what is happening on the glacier, on a specific part of the glacier, can see also the point clouds over time. So for example, we uh, created this uh, platform that is, uh, again, a work in progress with uh, students. Let's see what is happening this year during this edition. Uh, that is built on uh, leaflet, poetry, and uh, cesium JS libraries um, in order to view over time, starting from also uh, the 70s, because we collected some old data from uh, aerial photogrammetry, uh, the Italian uh, from the Italian agency. Uh, we started having all these point clouds over time, and also we are trying to make it more interactive, uh, showing also the points, uh, how the points uh, measurement uh, and displacement velocities uh, change over time. So every time there's some new modules, new parts of this tool that are implemented uh, during the summer school with some suggestion, maybe some design that is then implemented uh, as part of a thesis or uh, as part of the research. So in conclusion, uh, the summer school uh, until now provides uh, pro participants with uh, the opportunity to apply both theoretical as well as uh, uh, multidisciplinary skills, not only in geomatics, uh, in a real world environment. When sometimes geomatics teaching, especially for field works, is conducted in a uh, controlled environment uh, and is becoming even more difficult after uh, COVID uh, with uh, transition to online teaching. Uh, to have some kind of uh, real world experience, especially connected to a so challenging environment like the one of the glacier. We uh, also uh, provided the access, open access to the teaching material, uh, trying to move everything to Phosphor G tools. And also we are uh, deciding to go in this direction in order to have a constantly uh, updating uh, uh, platform that can be also uh, improved with, through collaboration with other research group interested in uh, these topics. Uh, and also for uh, having a sort of uh, human documentation of the project from one generation of students and researchers to the other one, engaging also in the term of the sustainability of the summer school and of the teaching uh, process. Uh, and there also, uh, during the summer school, it's nice to see how the students interact and uh, have uh, also some kind of team working, uh, the critical thinking connected to the importance of the open data they are releasing and creating with their work, and also during nice uh, break uh, on the mountain, enjoying some taste from uh, the, local, uh, the local mountain and the local area. Uh, as I was saying, and I constantly said during the presentation, this work is a constant open work in progress, so we are always open to suggestions. We are a small group, but we are really interested in trying to uh, break the barrier of access to what we are doing and uh, how the summer school is structured. Uh, so as the new edition, uh, edition is approaching, uh, there are some important issues. The first one is for sure uh, when we talk about open, uh, uh, open access and open source, we always have to think that open sometimes also means inclusion and accessibility also on the human side for the participation in the summer school. For this reason, we are now trying to study. Uh, at the moment, we are evaluating how to construct or provide also a virtual tour and fieldwork experience on the, on, the, um, on the glacier because, again, on the Alpine Hut, uh, there are limited seats, so no one can uh, be there and uh, actually witness uh, the entire summer school. And also there are a lot of in, uh, mobility barriers and accessibility barriers uh, that uh, limit the experience. So uh, we are testing now, evaluating actually Cesium JS for Open 3D Engine. Also, we are moving toward the full transition to FOSS uh, in order to adopt uh, entirely a workflow that is accessible. And also the idea is to engage the community because, okay, the glacier is disappearing under a geomorphological aspect and monitoring aspect, but what is disappearing is also the human memory of the local community that is there. And it's something that is going to be lost forever also because sometimes there is no access to particular um, communicating tool and platform. So in this way, it's a 
way to open also the memory of uh, the local community that interact with students and researchers there also with a bigger community outside the, the, the glacier. So also we are trying to find way to Im improve also the inclusion of uh, crowdsource data through Mapaton, Editaton and also other sources uh, in, uh, in the project. This is a short bibliography on what we did on the glacier. And so this is my last uh, slide. Sorry for getting too much <laughs> over the time. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>